title of my message tonight is When Things Don't Make Sense, Trust. When Things Don't Make Sense, Trust. Take your Bibles, turn with me if you would, to Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, and this evening we'll be looking at verse 5, a very simple uh, setting of scripture to start us off, and if you would read it in unison with me. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lead not unto thine own understanding. Father, I love you. I thank you, Lord, for, for your goodness. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you give us one that we can trust in that will never fail us. And Father, tonight, Father, as I bring this word, I just pray, Lord, that you would be with me, that, Father, you would give me the words to say. And, Father, even put aside the words that I should not say. Father, help my mind to be focused upon you, upon your word, and upon what you would have for these good people tonight. I thank you for each and every person here. We all have struggles in our life, and we just pray, God, that you would meet with us here tonight in a very special way. And we'll be sure to give you the thanks and praise, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Have you ever found it hard to trust in the things, even of the Lord, when they don't make sense? I think now, you know, even, you know, we always say that, you know, things just don't make sense. And I think we are living in the hottest kettle of things don't make sense water that we have seen in a long time. And you know, it, it goes in all realms of our life of things just don't seem right. And all the more, every day when you watch the news, when you just face situations, when you just see what's going on, all the more you remember scripture that says he will call us up that one day the trumpet will sound. And I think all the more, come, Lord Jesus, come. But in the meantime, but in the meantime, we have a duty to the Lord. And in doing that duty to the Lord, we need to trust in him. Now, I don't know about you, but I see in my own life that sometimes with circumstances, sometimes with situations, it's a little bit harder because I think us guys, we want to just be able to fix everything. We just want to see what's wrong. We want, to, we want to take a survey of it, and we just want to fix things. But there's some things that just can't be fixed. I know I watch my wife, and I know I, I can remember growing up, even with my mom, and moms just want to make it all better. But you know what? There's just some things that even the Band-Aid that mom gets cannot make things better. But thanks be to God, he tells us to trust in the Lord. As individuals, as families, and even as a church, we've definitely experienced things that don't make sense. And not trying to be the bearer of bad news, but I can tell you right now, there's going to be more things to come reality, life, we still live in a sinful world. We live in a world that's riddled by sin and we're contained in the flesh, flesh that sins, flesh that makes wrong choices, flesh that questions and can lose hope. But thanks be to God, our spirit can prevail and we can trust him in all things. So this evening, I want to take just a few moments and talk about three things to remember when we face these times in our life. Roman numeral number one, realize we are not alone. We are not alone. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 11 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, who resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. 
but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, that ye have suffered a while, will make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Realizing we're not alone. Why? Because the devil's out there. The devil's out there. Scripture says, um, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may, may devour. The devil's greatest tactic during hard times is to make you feel that you're all alone. During these hard times, he wants to make you feel that you're all alone. It's then that he can wreak havoc on your mind, your body, even your faith. He likes to draw you into an isolation, and the isolation is a playground for him to work his wicked will and ways in you. And I've been there. I've done that. That there's times where you just want to retreat from everything, from everyone, from every situation because you don't want to set yourself up for failure. You don't want to set yourself up for rejection. You don't want to set yourself up for fill in the blank. Oh, but the devil loves that isolation. Again, because it's where he can work his wicked will and weigh on you. He hates the children of God. He hates us. Do you realize tonight the devil hates us? And he'll do his very best to pull your focus from God and focus on the misery of your life. I am the king of between 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock a.m. and about 5 and 5.30 a.m. I'm the king of it. I'm telling you, I, I would be perfect if there was a 3 a.m. shift I'd be good for it. Roberta says, no, you don't want to have to get up, right, sister, at 3 o'clock for work. Because that's when I have to be very careful because he wants to do the wicked will that he has for my life. I can get up and I can worry about the absolute dumbest things that you've ever see, heard of in your life. I'll just make them up. <laughs> I'll make them up. I'll find myself worrying and concerned, and I think this doesn't even affect my life. I'm not even facing this. I'm making it all up. When in turn, my focus should be to go to the Word of God and to focus. But I don't. We read in verse 10 again, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye, ye have suffered for a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Because, my friends, there is true hope in Christ. So we need to be careful of the devil, of his tactics, of what he desires to do in our life. But you know what else can take our eyes off of Christ is our flesh. Our flesh you know, many times, we like to blame the devil. Think about that. It's easy to blame the devil. It sounds a little more spiritual than blaming ourselves. Now, I'm going to date it here, okay? So those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, just ignore this. The show Laugh In. Remember, the devil made me do it. Remember? And there's some that are like, no clue. And it is. It's easy. It's easy to say, well, the devil made me do it. But, you know, I know myself, and my friends, when I preach, I, I, it's usually about things I'm struggling with because I could have a whole series, I could have a crusade about things that I go through, things that I do, things in my life. But our flesh can also take our eyes and fixate them on ourself. Nobody's ever been where I've been. Nobody's ever been where I am right now. Nobody has felt my pain. Nobody's had my grief, my sorrow. We lean to self-help because we don't want to bother anyone. 
where we seem happy or content walking the valley alone. You know, that's not how God designed us. God designed us to be with one another. We need to be careful. Worry is a thief. Worry is a thief. He is a thief of strength. Worry is a thief of emotions. Worry is a thief of enjoyment. And worry is a thief of our active faith. You think about that. When you get yourself absorbed in worry, we lose our strength. We lose our emotions. We lose our enjoyment. We lose our faith. The Bible says, and this is not a scripture I gave you, so it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The very things most of us worry about many times are actually part of God's plan for our life. You know, I think we've been sometimes misguided by some of the things that we've heard, some of the preaching that's, that's out there, that it's all going to be happy. It's all going to be just joyous if you give your heart to Jesus. How many of you have found that that's true? No? Okay, so I'm not the only one then, because I thought, man, I've failed that big time. But you know what? He gives us a strength. He gives us an ability to walk through this Christian life. And it's in trusting in him. I think if there's one thing that we could teach new Christians is that things are going to happen. But we need to trust the one who saved us. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. I think of when David said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Oh, my friends, I've had to pray that. I could not. I wish I had kept a tally of every time. Because you know what? I can lose it. As I find myself focusing on things that are not of God. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. So we see that the devil, he, he has those tactics of making us feel that we're alone. Our flesh also can take our eyes and fixate them on ourselves. And Pastor used this scripture a few weeks ago, and, and I loved it. And I have thought of it over and over and over again. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 through 28. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And if there is a scripture that I have thought of so many times... Because the last few months have been a little stressful, just situations in life, but it's all part of life. But I thought about that, and I think of this over and over and over, and he told how many, I don't know how they got the count, but how many billions of birds there are in the world. I still haven't figured out how they know, but he gave the stats because it was online, so it must be true. But with that, do you see them? going crazy about where they go to get their food? No, they go crazy because they find food. You know, it talks about the lilies of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. They don't get all panicky. Why do we? Are we not better than they? And I thought about this where it says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? With all that worry, what does it gain you? What has it gained you? Absolutely nothing. 
Because when things don't make sense, we need to trust. God cares for you. If you get nothing else out of this message, it's remembering that God cares for you. Irma Bombeck said, worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but never gets you anywhere. You think about that. Gives you something to do, but never gets you anywhere. So we see that the devil can come in and he can play. We see that our own very flesh can come in and play with us. But you know what? Sometimes others can do it to us. It's not intentional, friends. It's not intentional, but they can make us feel very alone. Maybe they don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. So they do nothing. I'm guilty of this. I avoid the phone calls. I don't know what to say. I am the world's worst, and I'm going to tell you right now. I go to the funeral home, and it's just that instinct of saying, how you doing? How do you think? So there's times where I just don't, I'll avoid it because I don't know what to say. And it's not, is there something going on behind? Oh, okay. I, I, I'm watching everybody look, and Brother Kaufman's there with the remote, and I thought it was to turn me off. But, <laughs> but others can do that. So they, they avoid making the phone calls. They avoid the contacts, thinking somebody else will make that contacts. I'm not good at what to say. But, you know, sometimes it is just the essence of being there for someone. It's doing no more and no less than just being there for them. Maybe it's just a handshake. Maybe it's a hug. Maybe it's just a smile. Or maybe it's just simply saying, I'm praying for you. Those words can have, bring more strength to one than quoting 10 scriptures and giving 50 examples in a four-point message. Just saying, you know what, I'm praying for you. And many times that's all the words that need to be said. What strength that can bring. Today, my friends, <clears throat> God's word assures us we're not alone. Woodrow Kroll, I don't know who Woodrow is, but I found a good quote. He says, you are never alone when you are alone with God. Think about that. You are never alone when you're alone with God. God says, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. God does know what you're going through. Because even before he created you, he knew the consequences of man's sin. Sin that brought hardship, heartache, despair, hurt, and death. But his word assures us that he is there for us. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also, did you get that? But will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. He's made a way of escape. But we just think we're going to be that recluse and we're just going to step back and stay with it. But he's made a way of escape. And with that word, to remember his promises. Number two, remember the promises. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I never, I think, really related to that as much as I have being a dad. 
Because if nothing else, I want him to know. I want Drew to know. And I know you want your children to know. I will always be there for you. Now, it may not be physically as they grow and as they go on their own, but you're always there for them. He says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And you think about that. You think about that. That's his love for us. And there are times that this is one of the greatest hopes you can hold on to. God's love is secure. It keeps, it maintains, it comforts, and it is everlasting. Hallelujah, what a Savior. He hears us. Micah 7.7 7 says, Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. My God will hear me. Your God will hear you. You know, it's sometimes just taking those little nuggets from the scripture And it may be during the darkest of times. But just think of that. My God will hear me. I believe, if we're honest, there have been times for all of us that we feel our prayers are unheard and maybe unresponded to. But this verse gives us a good breakdown of the process of prayer. Look unto God. Therefore will I look unto the Lord. Look unto him. Many times we voice a prayer for the sake of wanting out of the situation. Now, I'm, maybe I'm the only one that's ever done that. But we might pray just to get out of that situation. But are we looking to him? Are we willing to wait or looking for the great escape? Are we willing to wait or looking for the great escape? We must wait. And once those two things are met, he hears us. He hears us. We'll look to the Lord, we'll wait upon him, and he will hear us. What a promise. What a promise. He loves us. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. My friends, if we could just grasp the concept of God's love for us and the joy that we bring to his life, it could transform us. It could transform our very being. It could transform our effectiveness. It could transform our witness if we could just grasp the love that he has for us. The hardest reason for understanding God's love, as I've read, is that we equate it to the love given to us by others. But his is a different love, a true love. His is a pure love. His is an unconditional love. His is a love not bound by emotion or present situations. That's how humans love. It's all about what's going on right now. It's all about the present situation. How many of us, and I'm sure all of us, have have known people or maybe even experienced yourself to where, I don't love you anymore. It's done. It's over. Oh, my friends, the love that God has, the depth, the roots of his love are so different. Today, grasp the love that God has for his own. So we see that he hears us. We see that he loves us. And we see that his strength is for us. Psalm chapter 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. 
I can remember many years ago singing a chorus. It says, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The strength that he gives us is a strength to be conquerors. It's a strength to be victorious in our life as we trust him. Look at the strength that we expend trying to do things in our own strength. Because that's the way we do it. Do it in our own strength. But utilizing his strength. He is our rock. It is a sure foundation. One that cannot be moved. Cannot be shaken or broken down. He is our fortress. A safe place of escape. He is our deliverer. Our rescuer. He is our God. He is all we need. He is my strength, the muscle we need to fight. He is our buckler, a shield to protect us. He is the horn of our salvation. One commentary talks about the horn as the Old Testament altar offered a refuge and atonement. Jesus offers clemency and cleansing through the cross. Do you ever reread a passage and think, why do I spend my energy my time and I worry when it's all taken care of through Christ. I think of this often myself, knowing that God is our strength. He is our all in all. Michael Youssef says, remembering his promises not only strengthens us, but can help us to shape others. And this one gets me. Now think about this. Pay attention if you have nothing else. When your children see us clinging to the promises of God, they will grow up trusting in his goodness. Think about your own childhood. What did your parents cling to? I grew up in a non-Christian home. I did not, I did not have the privilege. I grew up in a good home. My dad worked hard. My mom took care of us. You know, we always had three meals a day. We had a car. We had a home. We had heat. We had water. We had, we had all of that, those things. But I never had that foundation. You know, how I, you know how I ended up getting saved? And I've told this before, too, so just act surprised when I tell you. I got fired from a job. I got fired. And at that time, I that same day, I got a different job, and There again, some of you will have absolutely no relation to what I'm going to say, but at Hex Discount Store, I got a job at Potter Village at Hex Discount Store. And a woman who had just become a Christian, she got a job as well at Hex Discount Store about five months after I did. And they put her in my department. And she was freshly saved. And she wouldn't stop talking about it. Day after day, hour after hour. And you know, I'm thinking, don't you have aisles to straighten? Don't you have product to put out? Oh, but the joy of her salvation. And I thank God for that. I thank God, honestly, for getting fired from a job. Except sometimes I run into that lady that fired me. And I know she doesn't remember me. That's been... A long time ago. And I want to go up and say, do you remember firing me? Because the whole thing is, what she thought I was doing continued after she fired me, and it was somebody else. They were stealing. It wasn't me. But that's okay, because you know what? It's all part of God's plan. Because you know what I found out? When things don't make sense, trust him. Trust him. He's got it all planned out. He knew me when he formed me in my mother's womb. It didn't take him by surprise. Because he had a plan for my life. And as I looked at it and think back, I just had to trust. I don't even know where I was. There we go. So we see tonight in this, that we need to realize we're not alone. We need to remember the promises. And finally, very simply, the whole thing of the message, we need to trust him. That's what it all boils down to, my friends. 
This isn't deep theological stuff. It's just good old Bible stuff. We need to simply trust him. When things don't make sense, trust. Psalm chapter 20. Psalm 20 says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord thy God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Our world steers us to trust in material things, money, others, positions, name recognition. But my friends, someday, when the material things are gone, when the money's run dry, when others have left us, when the position is lost, and you know what? And our name is a mere memory. Remember the name of the Lord our God. Scott Wesley Brown wrote a song, and I've always loved, I've always loved this song. And it says, you have faced the mountains of desperation. You have climbed, you have fought, you have won. But this valley that lies coldly before you casts a shadow you cannot overcome. And just when you thought you had it all together, you knew every verse to get you through. By this time, the sorrow broke more than just your heart. And reciting all those verses just won't do. When answers aren't enough, there is Jesus. He is more than just an answer to your prayer. And your heart will find a safe and peaceful refuge. When answers aren't enough, he is there. Instead of asking why did it happen, think of where it can lead you from here. Oh, that's strong. Instead of asking why did it happen, think of where it can lead you from here. And as your pain is slowly easing, you can find a greater reason to live your life triumphant through the tears. When answers aren't enough, there is Jesus. Corey Ten Boom said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Stand with me if you would, please, maybe tonight. You've never come to a trusting relationship with Christ Jesus. Maybe you're listening by way of radio, maybe by way of Facebook. You say, Frank, I don't even know what you're talking about with this relationship. My friends, as we talked about this morning, it's simply acknowledging that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. No matter what you've done in life, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, one thing we all have in common is we have to come and acknowledging that we're a sinner in need of a Savior. No matter how much you've given, no matter what you've done, no matter what your fame, all my friends, the ground beneath the cross is level. We all come as sinners before a righteous God, knowing we deserve hell. But then if we just simply believe that Jesus Christ came, he was born of a virgin, he lived, he died, and he rose again, victorious from the grave. If we but believe that, and if we confess him as our personal Lord and our personal Savior, my friends, you can know with all assurance that you're saved. Our world, in order to gain anything, likes to put a lot of works into everything. But my friends, the work's been done for your salvation. 
the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. There's nothing more, nothing less. Don't try to add to it. Don't try to subtract from it. Just simply come to know him as personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you have. Maybe you have come to know him. And maybe tonight there's just issues that just don't make sense. Maybe it's in your personal life. Maybe it's just the, the cares and the concerns of our, of our society, of our world right now. You know what? Just trust him. Just put it all aside. And say, God, I want to just focus on you. If we spend as much time focused on him as we do on the concerns, the cares, and the situations of the world. Oh, my friends, I was thinking about this the other day. We would just see that revival. We read about him, but my friends, isn't it time that we pray that we live through one? That we see the mighty moving of the Holy Spirit of God come into our homes, come into our cities, come into our states, come into our nations, and come into our world. Isn't it time? Tonight, wherever you are, whatever the circumstances, whatever the situation is, I just ask, when things don't make sense, trust.